Welcome to our next lesson. Today, we're going to be looking at energy flow. And specifically, we're going to be looking at how energy moves from one organism to the next. So we're going to have to be able to characterize and ascribe what we were referring to as trophic levels. So that is our goal for today, that you can identify and that you can characterize different organisms based upon how they obtain their energy by their trophic level. Let's get this all started. So, again, remember, energy from the ecosystem comes most commonly from the sun. So it's not the only abiotic factor that provides energy, but it's the one that we're going to look at the most. That abiotic factor provides energy for the ecosystem. It is then converted from light energy into chemical energy by a group of organisms called autotrophs. And specifically, they are also referred to by their trophic level as being producers or primary producers. So these producers are able to convert the energy from the sun into a usable form of chemical energy that then every other organism in that ecosystem is going to use. The next type of organism is the heterotroph. And heterotrophs are unable to convert light energy into chemical energy. The only way that they can obtain energy is through consuming another organism. So heterotrophs are referred to first off as consumers. And consumers eat other organisms. The next type of heterotroph are called decomposers because once an organism dies, its body will be broken down and the nutrients and energy within it is going to be used by that group called decomposers. So organisms that consume other organisms are called consumers and the organisms that break down dead organic matter are called decomposers. In the case right here, we happen to have, again, a deer, and this deer is a consumer. It would consume the plant matter, plants, autotrophs, obtain the energy from the sun, and now the deer is going to obtain energy from the plants by eating the plants. When we show energy flowing in an ecosystem, we show the energy by arrows. So, if we have the grass right here, it's going to obtain energy from the sun. So here we have a sun and the energy is going to travel down to the grass. That is how we would show the movement of energy from one area to another area. And in this case, it is being released from the sun and it is being obtained by the grass. The grass then has its energy move from itself to an organism that eats it. So if we take a zebra, which eats the grass, we then show the direction that the energy goes, again, by an arrow going from the grass to the zebra because the zebra is obtaining energy from the grass. The zebra, if it gets eaten by a lion, again, we show the energy going from the zebra to the lion by an arrow. Typically, we don't show the sun and its energy being transferred to the earth. When we look at the ecosystem and we look at the way that the energy flows, we look at it flowing from organism to organism to organism. Specifically, in this instance, from the base level, which is called a primary producer. It is the first trophic level. It is the basis of the entire ecosystem's energy. The organisms that consume the primary producer are called primary consumers. The zebra is a primary consumer. It eats the primary producer. The lion would then be a secondary consumer because it will consume the primary consumer. And then after the secondary consumer, we can go to the tertiary consumer, and then that would be consumed by a quaternary consumer. Trophic levels typically don't get that high because remember, the energy going from one organism to the next, there is a loss in that conversion. So we'll look at that later on. This 
is an example of a food chain following one single direct path that energy can take. This is obviously not the only path that energy could go from the grass. We could also have grass being eaten by an antelope and then that antelope being eaten by a lion. Or we could have grass being eaten by a buffalo and then the buffalo being consumed by a lion. Each different pathway is a different food chain. If we were to put these food chains together and combine them, we end up with a food web. So this is now an example of a food web where we see the energy from the grass going to different organisms, following different paths, and then that different paths that they can then take being consumed by a lion. Or possibly, if it's not a lion, we can add more organisms into this food web. We could say that antelope could also be consumed by a cheetah, or we could look at the zebra being consumed by a leopard. These are obviously not the only organisms that we can have here, but it is an example of a food web. Again, recognizing that the zebra, the buffalo, the antelope, each one of these organisms is a primary consumer. They consume the autotroph. They consume the primary producer. The leopard, the lion, and the cheetah are all examples of secondary consumers because their food source is the primary consumer. We could also add that you could have another type of primary consumer with a hippopotamus where it doesn't happen to have any natural predators and so it's the end of its food chain. Or we could even add grasshoppers as primary consumers and then moving from a grasshopper to a small bird which eats the grasshopper. Again, this small bird would also be a secondary consumer, just like the leopard, the cheetah, and the lion. So it's not about an organism's size. It's not about how large of a predator it is. It's just talking about how many steps removed an organism is from the primary energy source. And in this case, the bird is the same number of steps away from that primary energy source as the leopard, the lion, and the cheetah. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about trophic levels. As each of these organisms would die, and at that moment, decomposers are going to play a vital role in then breaking down their organic matter and putting it back into the soil and also using up the energy that is left over. So in summary, energy travels from one organism to another organism as food. That's how energy moves through the different trophic levels. It starts off in the primary producers and then moves into the consumers each step as organisms eat other organisms. And each organism can be categorized by that trophic level, by where it obtains its energy, how many steps removed it is from the primary energy source. That is how we can categorize each organism upon this planet. That's it for this time. Be awesome, stay awesome.